All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal, Patreon, links both down below if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, brief, uh, shorter one this time. We have some ongoing, uh, really not good situations in various parts of the world. Said situations being extreme drought coupled with uh, extreme overbearing heat and the irreparable uh, agricultural damage that uh, results from such. The primary area in focus is Paraguay and uh, northern Argentina along with a little bit of southern Brazil with Paraguay uh, being hit the worst however as the region has been in a crippling drought for a prolonged period now. As many of you may recall uh, particularly last year the drought in the western U.S. was pretty bad and uh, there was a long multi-month stretch with like basically no precipitation so that was a really bad round uh, one year. Well uh, Paraguay and the immediate area around it have been uh, in that kind of condition for four straight years now resulting in the primary river there, the Parana in its more inland portions, uh, going actually completely dry in various areas, and uh, then downriver, where it does actually have water flow, it is down under a third of even the uh, not very high level of what it would otherwise be expected to be. Normally it, it is only around 10 feet deep, however now, down in the Argentinian portion, uh, it's only about three feet deep, and uh, further up towards Paraguay, it's uh, as low as only one foot deep now. To the point of now being too shallow for boats to actually use it. And recently this ongoing drought circumstance has been combined with off and on exorbitantly extreme temperatures. At some points reaching as high as 123 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 50 or 51 Celsius. These are brutally absurd temperatures, normally supposed to be confined to places like Death Valley. Although the uh, majority of the effect, obviously being from the uh, four-year exacerbated drought, has been varying levels of agricultural collapse, uh, with Paraguay suffering the harshest effects as of this time this season, seeing crop failure rates of 70%. Seven zero percentile symbol with drought induced crop failures also occurring in neighboring Brazil and uh, northern Argentina. However, the failure rates there are nowhere near as harsh or as high as Paraguay. And although the drought conditions are the primary factor, uh, especially for Paraguay, because they just don't have the money and don't have the infrastructure to buy and or then uh, get in any kind of like alternative source of water. Even over in neighboring Argentina and Brazil, where uh, they can do that to an extent, there the extreme heat conditions uh, made that not really matter anyways, as again it was getting up into the uh, 110s and even up to around 120, some places hitting 123, and most agricultural plants, most species that we designate as crops, will begin to die once temperatures hit around like 103 to 105 in Fahrenheit, or 41 or 42 Celsius, I think, begin to, mind you, it's, it's a gradual process. If the air temperature around them, along with especially the sun uh, beating down on them like that, uh, continues for a protracted period, then uh, they will wither out and die if, if it stays above that temperature range of around 103 to 105. And so while the absence of water is uh, destroying Paraguay with crop failure rates of around 70%, neighboring regions in Argentina and Brazil who have more water available saw extensive damage from uh, those temperature time spans as uh, some of those lasted for like one to two weeks at a time. They also lost uh, decent portions of livestock because the farmers down there uh, don't have, you know, nicely air-conditioned warehouses that uh, they can herd all their livestock into. So things down there are not going well, nor are they going well in a number of other places. Uh, over in Somalia has been enduring a prolonged drought of its own now, and they are enduring massive crop failure and livestock die-off, and now their coastal cities and settlements are becoming crowded by influxes of former farmers and herders in just these last number of months who now have become 
no longer farmers or herders. And finally, a much more man-made problem over in Afghanistan. Nine million people are now uh, severely undernourished as uh, food supplies have not only become scarce in the country, but also uh, their distribution has just overall been disrupted. The Taliban resurgency uh, several months back uh, caused many farmers and herders to uh, abandon their livelihoods and flee. A lot of damage was done by the Taliban resurgence. And also, despite potential statements to the contrary, uh, the Taliban are, they are not a uh, well-run uh, governing system. Not that the former Afghani government was either, but uh, the Taliban are a much worse option. And so things have broken down and become horrifically disorganized. And also because of said new government in power in Afghanistan, uh, there's been some issues uh, trying to actually get uh, food relief uh, aid packages and stuff uh, into and well distributed throughout the country. And that's the end of this brief episode. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. Links are down there if you want to support me. Don't do so unless you actually can do so. You can subscribe to my Catch channel too if you want. That helps me. But no matter what, may God bless, protect, and save all of you. And I will see you all around next time.